Welcome back once again. Today we are looking at Zorin OS 15 Lite. Now this just came out today, as best as I can, uh, as best as I can tell anyway. And uh, I am personally very excited about the potential of this project in general, and especially the Lite release, uh, because two reasons. First of all, Windows 7 is losing support in January 2020. The Zorin team are, are all over this; they're well aware of it and uh, they are specifically positioning their products to appeal to that market amongst others, trying to make the Linux desktop as viable as an option uh, as they possibly can. Uh, now, also, if you haven't checked out my conversation with uh, one of the co-founders of the Zorin project, then go and check that out. I'll chuck it up in the cards. Now, here's the thing. If you are a hardcore Linux fan, user, enthusiast, and you have your favorite distro, you probably run Arch, you're a developer, you love your computer, and you don't understand why another Ubuntu-based distro exists, then feel free, go watch another video, you'll waste your time here because none of what I'm gonna say is gonna make sense to you. But if you are the sort of person that wants to see Linux succeed and you wanna be able to have a project to hand to uh, you know friends, relatives, that kind of thing, uh, for all the purposes of this video, today we're gonna to be trying to do the basic stuff that most people would wanna do with their computers uh, using Zorin OS 15 Lite, and we're just gonna see what happens. Uh, so, let's jump into this. I'll talk about what's new in Zorin OS 15 Lite, uh, but we're also gonna play around with it and uh, see how far we can push it. Let's do it. Okay, so. Uh, quick facts out of the way first. When it comes to what this distribution is uh, based off, it is based off Ubuntu 18.04.3. So it's running the Linux kernel 5.0. It has access to not quite the very latest uh, NVIDIA drivers, at least as best as I can tell, but we are running the very latest stable XFCE desktop, which is XFCE 4.14. That in itself is impressive because it doesn't come with the Ubuntu 18.04 release cycle in general. So it's great to see that the Zorin team have actually taken the time to go ahead and get the latest stable XFCE release, knowing that this particular uh, distro is gonna be supported for many years to come. Uh, so the fact that they've gone ahead and, and put in the work to do that is, is much, much appreciated. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice straight out of the box as well, and I, I don't often talk about look and feel very often because it's very shallow and you can change Linux to how you want, but through the eyes of somebody who is just looking at this for the very first time, this theming is like the most polished theme set I have seen really. And I mentioned this with my Zorin OS 15 um, uh, core review and ultimate review, that, uh, that the theming that they've got going on here is just so nice. And the reason that I say it's so nice, uh, hear me when I say that um, the, the theme and the icon set and the fonts all work together to present something that you wanna take this distribution or you wanna take this project, this desktop environment seriously. In that it doesn't look goofy, it doesn't look overly nerdy, it doesn't look overly like flowery, it doesn't look like, for example, uh, Deep In looks beautiful, but a lot of people would kind of be turned off by how like translucent and iOS-ish that it is. Whereas this distribution, like the, the look and feel, the GTK theme that they've got going on and the icons, they tread a really great balance of uh, giving you something that looks uh, professional, but also not overdoing it when it comes to just overall pizzazz. Now they've got their, um, they've got the Zorin OS appearance uh, app here as well, so you can change very easily where the title buttons are, which is very, very helpful. Uh, they also have the light and dark theme there as well. And they even have the feature from Zorin OS 15 to carry over of the automatic day and night theme, which I think is amazing. Uh, and you can also change the accent colors. This level of customization is more than enough for what most people want out of their distro. Just poking around the desktop in terms of what, how they've customized XFCE, they keep the panel fairly minimalist. They've got a bunch of, uh, you've got your app launches in a very Windows 7 style on the panel here. You have a notification manager, which is really straightforward. And you've got a do not disturb toggle at the end there, which is great. And, uh, and honestly, I've talked about this at, at length before, but I'll chuck the link for the XFCE review that I did as well. Uh, they've got your Bluetooth manager, network manager, power manager, and volume. So there's not too much clogging up the desktop here. They've got a beautiful pack of wallpapers installed out of the box. And I know I'm talking about appearance stuff, but this is like, first impressions are, uh, mean a lot when you're a, uh, when you're a new Linux user. 
Okay, so let's get to the part where we talk about uh, resource usage, because for a distribution that labels itself as a light distribution, uh, this isn't the lightest in terms of like resource usage out of the box. So you'll notice that I'm running quite a bit of stuff in the background here. I've got, well, you can kind of see everything that I've got going on here. Uh, now out of the box, this distribution uses around 700 uh, meg of RAM. Now I've only assigned this virtual machine four, um, including uh, the graphics side of things. It's only uh, only about 3.83 gig is actually usable to the system. And I'm giving it two cores in a virtual machine. Now, obviously the performance on bare metal is going to be better. Um, but for, again, thinking about the target user, uh, anyone who's running, who's been running Windows 7 on their PC and the, the support for that is ending, this is going to feel light and breezy. Like this is gonna feel snappy as. Now, the biggest sacrifice that people are going to notice between uh, Windows 7 or a, another operating system and this one will be the lack of, uh, of fancy animations. That will be the number one thing that people will probably notice, but it also means that the distribution is left feeling really snappy because you're not sitting around waiting for anything fancy to happen. Okay, so let us, let's us let's run some scenarios here. First of all, um, I'm going to, actually, I'm gonna leave the resource um, monitor open. Okay, so let us uh, hop over to a new desktop here and uh, we will assume that, we've, uh, that we are a, just a stock average computer user and the first thing that we wanna do when we boot up our system is we wanna check uh, YouTube. That's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna, um, I've got Firefox open here. When Firefox opens, it's really nice to see that they've enabled that tweak to get rid of the excess uh, Chrome, <laughs> pun intended, uh, the excess Chrome out of the, the browser here. Um, so basically your window controls, your title bar controls are in the same uh, level as your tabs, which is great. Uh, so YouTube opens uh, just fine. That's, uh, that's all good. Let's see if I can, I'll see if I can push this and watch like a high definition video. Let me guess, in, uh, you're too busy and to watch we'll, this ad. Uh. We'll see if we can watch a high definition video and just push this CPU a little bit. I'll push it to 1080p because let's face it, if you're running Windows 7 on an old computer, you're not too interested in, uh, you're not too interested in watching 4K videos. Oh, push it to full screen. See if it handles it. And it does. I don't know if this is coming across in the recording. This is butter smooth. No worries at all. Okay, this is, this is sick. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna realize that we don't like Firefox because we're not familiar with it and it doesn't hold all our passwords. So of course, like any regular human being, we're gonna go out and try and install Chrome. What I'm done is I have done what any sensible human being would do, open up the software center and I've just typed Chrome into the search bar. We're gonna hit enter, we're gonna wait for a while and uh, we're gonna see if it can turn something up for us. Uh, also looking around in the menu here, we've got some games, those look familiar. Uh, we've got graphics, the GNU image manipulation. Okay, that's interesting. All right, uh, very good. We've also got some, uh, we've got a media player, Pitivy. Hmm, not knowing of course what Pitivy would be. I'd open that and uh, turns out, oh, it looks like it's a video editor. Oh, that makes sense, very good. What I'm trying to get at here is that the uh, even the way that the menus are laid out, they sort of tread a good line of, of naming the application what it is, but also naming the application based on what it does to try and you know help people over the line there. Okay, now typing in Chrome, I doesn't look like I can install Google Chrome, but there's this other thing, Chromium. Okay, so it looks like this is an open source version of Google Chrome. So maybe I'll install that one and see what happens. So I'm just gonna click install. I'm gonna give it my password. Now, tongue in cheek here, guys, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that this isn't the way that I usually review distributions, but I'm going for something specific here. Uh, LibreOffice Writer, just jumping back into my own character here instead of this other character that I'm playing. Uh, LibreOffice Writer, they use the tabbed interface, which is really nice, or Zorin enable the tabbed interface out of the box, which I think is so much cleaner and more modern than, uh, than the old 2003 icon style. So good on them for enabling that. Uh, that seems to be ticking away quite nicely, which is great. Catfish, um, as an accessory, 
is uh, is for searching your files in your file manager. Uh, you will notice that the reason I've got so much stuff going on here is just that I'm trying to stress test this a little bit and just see at what point this starts giving up. Uh, you can see we're only using about 1.3 gig, which is great. And the, usually the time and attention to detail that the Zorin team give uh, to their distributions uh, leads me to give a lot of confidence and it leads to a lot of confidence in their products and their products, I think, speak for themselves. So let's see if we can install Steam. There it is, we have a, we have a native repository. We've even got Lutris here as well, which is fantastic. So gaming is more or less covered. And also you get the modern Nvidia ISO, uh, drivers straight on the ISO, which is fantastic. They're not the most up-to-date versions, like I mentioned, but they're still there. When it comes to like application availability, honestly, they've covered all their boxes, which is fantastic. We are still installing, but it definitely doesn't seem like anything's hanging. So uh, as much as this takes a little while to uh, to get going, uh, bearing in mind, obviously, also Chromium is the is a snap package by default with uh, Ubuntu releases now. Now, the other thing that I do want to call out is because of the fact that this is running on an LTS base, uh, the packages that come in the default repositories, basically the servers that provide the App Store experience, uh, are pretty old. But also the fantastic thing that the Zorin team have done consistently is that the, they have support for both Flatpak and Snap out of the box. With the, uh, I guess, with the disclaimer that when it comes to Flatpak, you have to enable the FlatHub repository uh, in order to access all of the, you know, the applications that Flatpak can give you. But if you're a new user, you're probably not going to go through and, uh, and try and enable a FlatHub repository out of the box. Now, the good thing is, is that if you were curious um, and you wanted to enable the uh, FlatHub repository and you'd heard about Flatpak, by the way, can we all just take a moment to appreciate this, uh, this search? Uh, home screen. It's, it's pretty minty fresh. Anyway, uh, so let's say, for example, I'm curious as a new user and I want to look at Flatpak and I type Flatpak Zorin. What happens here? It says get set up Flatpak. Okay, I'll click on that top link. That makes sense. And then what it should do in theory is it should give me a reference file. What I'm going to try and do is install a Flatpak app straight from FlatHub. Uh, so it, hopefully we'll be able to download the reference file and the software store will know what to do with that. Let's say, for example, I go, oh, Spotify, I definitely want that in my life. So I'm going to click install and I'm going to open that file with the software center. We'll see what happens. Now, it, Chromium should have installed by now and by the looks of things it has. So let's open this up and it being a snap package, it will get a, hopefully we'll get a fairly good idea of the response time. Well, that, I didn't edit that. That's how long it took to open up the first time. And uh, so if we go to, let's say, youtube.com, and there it is. So that seems to be okay. All right, now I will close it and let's open it again and see if it launches any quicker. Well, that was very quick. So snap package is not opening quick enough. I think we can dispel that myth at least here on Zorin Lite. Good stuff. Now, it, when I open up that Spotify Flatpak file, I can say install and it will actually go ahead and add the FlatHub repository. I don't know if you noticed before, but there was a notification down here saying that it will add a repository to Flatpak. The fact that it can understand these reference files out of the box is very, very valuable because that will be the way that an average person most likely will install a, uh, a Flatpak app. Uh, even in a virtual machine with only two cores and four gig of RAM, this seems to have held up pretty well. Haven't encountered any crashes. Um, now I can see, uh, I can easily see the biggest criticism that people having about this system is the fact that it's using a very outdated software base from April of 2018. Uh, but to it, to me, they've alleviated these problems by having snap packages there. They've got flat, flat pack support as well. Um, and they've also got the latest desktop environment uh, fully enabled. To me, they've ticked all the right boxes to create a user experience that can help people into the Linux world coming off uh, Windows 7. Now, it looks like the installation of Spotify is off and racing, so that's great to see, and I reckon I will leave it there. 
Look, I'll pass the question off to you guys. The, the biggest pros that Zorin OS Lite has going for it is that it is definitely suitable for older hardware. It is also highly visually polished. The fonts, the GTK theming, the subtle, subtle animations within that GTK theme, uh, and the uh, light customization that you have out of the box, accent colors, um, light and dark theme. Uh, these are all excellent touches to XFCE and it makes it feel highly polished and not very um, different to the Zorin OS Core or Ultimate Editions or Education, the, the GNOME based release. Now on the con side of things, it does have a few features missing compared to Zorin OS Core, uh, but you're gonna make some sacrifices if you want to have a lighter weight system. Software management seems pretty flawless. Both snaps and flat packs from Flathub seem to be working uh, just fine. And more importantly, the performance of said snap package is actually very respectable. So these, these are all good things. I don't really have to explain who this distribution is not aimed at. I think that's pretty evident. But to anyone making a Linux distribution in the world, honestly, I am more than happy to wait for a quality release of an open source uh, software project than to rush things out the door and have a below average experience. You can absolutely get lighter Linux desktops, no doubt about it. Are they going to be as polished, user-friendly, and fully featured as Zorin OS Lite? I don't know. I don't think so. I think the bespoke components that Zorin OS brings to the table give it a unique enough offering to be very compelling for new Linux users or those that just want a really highly polished and stable operating system. That'll do it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Like and subscribe, of course. Uh, apparently, there's only like 30 something percent of my views come from subscribers. So, you know, jump on that subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.